welcome to the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society. Welcome to ITSB Magazine. You're listening to a new The Hacker Factory podcast with hacker maker Philip Wiley. You're about to discover what the role of a professional hacker entails, the different specializations it holds, and what it takes to learn and become one. Enjoy the conversation as Philip and guests unveil the secrets of professional hacking, a mysterious, intriguing, and often misunderstood occupation. Knowledge is power, now more than ever. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Hacker Factory Podcast. I'm your host, Philip Wiley. I refer to myself as the Hacker Maker because I teach and mentor aspiring pen testers. This show is an extension of those efforts, which are my passions. And each week or each episode, I feature someone that are friends of mine from the community or different hackers out there, share their stories, how they got started and, and how to learn to be a pen tester. So today I am very happy to have my good friend, uh, Davin Jackson on here. Thank you for joining, Davin. Thank you for having me. Thanks for inviting me and congratulations on the new show. Oh, thank you. So how are things going in your world? Uh, things are great. You know, can't complain. Um, you know, it's been it's been a rough start to 2021 so far, but things are starting to look up. Business is great. Work is great. That's good. Uh, family is healthy. So, you know, can't really ask for too much more. No, I really can't. So, for some of my guests or some of my uh, viewers that are not familiar with you, could you tell our listeners about yourself? Sure. So, um, like like Phil said, my name is Davin Jackson. I also um, am known as DJX Alpha on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I run Alpha Cybersecurity, which is mainly a blog and content creation um, site. I deal with talking about different things from how to get into cybersecurity, different uh, tips and tricks for pen testing. Um, and I also, uh, do, a, a show where I interview other people as well. Um, so I basically that's pretty much what I've been doing, what I've been working on. Uh, that's pretty much my passion. Um, professionally, I am a penetration tester. Uh, I started off doing network pen testing and now I mainly do like web app and application pen testing. So anything from, you know, a website to API testing to I'm trying to, and I'm starting to get into mobile as well. Oh, cool. So could, could you share with how you got started? Uh, you want the long version or the short yeah. version? <laughs> so knowing that, knowing that you're a big comic book fan, like I am as well. Uh, I want your origin story. <laughs> nice. So right. how did you become the superhero hacker? Um, so I guess you could say, I kind of always knew I wanted to deal with tech, um, from my earliest memories. I always used to try to tinker with stuff. I always wanted to know how things worked. What happens if I push this button while pushing this button? Um, my grandmother, God rest her soul, um, let me pretty much do everything I wanted to do as long as, um, I was able to put it back together by the time my father picked me up from school, uh, from, from, from work. And, um, like I said, I just always wanted to tinker and figure out how things worked. Uh, as I got older, um, I kind of veered away from it. And then I actually ended up in the military and a lot of people would think, you know, oh, you went into the military and that's where you learned cybersecurity. I was actually an aircraft mechanic. Um, <laughs> I, I started off, I was supposed, I wanted to work on um, heavies so I could get a job at the airline after I got out and they gave me F-16s. And so I started working on F-16s for a little while. And then there was an opportunity to work on a stealth fighter um, in New Mexico, which I actually said no, but usually when the government tells you to do something, there's not really <laughs> too much you can do about it. So even though I told them no, uh, two nights later, my orders were cut and I was sent to New Mexico. Um, it was a great experience. It was a really, you know, just a cool experience to be around. I got to see a lot of things, some things that I can't talk about. But um, after I got out of the military, um, surprise, surprise, there weren't any fighter jets in the civilian world. So I moved around a little bit. I've worked in warehouses. I've worked at um, Target when they when it first opened up in my city. Um, and I and it was still all tech related. Like I worked in the tech on in, in the tech department at Target. Um, and then I tried my hand at electrical and do like trade work. So I did electrical for a little while. 
um, fell off of a ladder at a job site, realized I was able to walk and walked off the job site because I wasn't falling <laughs> off of ladders anymore. Um, and then I, then I was working um, as an alarm te technician. So doing low voltage stuff and actually doing like some of the first smart homes that were coming out that were like fully integrated by like a remote control. And um, I did that for a little while and I was working towards getting my license. But um, in order to do that in the state of Connecticut, you got to get registered as an apprentice. And the only person who can register you was your employer. Um, and unfortunately, my employer chose not to register me. And I remember feeling like, okay, I need to do something where I could take control of, you know, my career progression and my career, my career path. Um, so went home, had a conversation with uh, my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time. And uh, essentially she kind of put her foot in my behind and just kind of told me, you know, we'll figure it out. You know, we had at this time, my daughter was born and we were just trying to figure out what we were going to do next. Um, and that's what kind of brought me back into tech. Um, I looked into it and, you know, I wasn't sure if I really wanted to go to college, but I started looking at the certification route. So um, I started looking at the A plus certification and trying to work my way up. And I actually landed a job at Circuit City. Now I'm showing my age, <laughs> but um, I was at Circuit City as their um, their home theater installation technician. And there was an opening on the PC bench. And I convinced the manager to, you know, give me an extra dollar an hour. And when I wasn't doing home theater installations, I could work on the PC bench because this would give me the hands-on experience to learn what I was reading in the books. Um, and he agreed to it. And it just kind of took off from there. Uh, once they went out of business, I looked at, um, I worked uh, at a couple different places. Um, I worked at a, like a rehab facility doing their IT infrastructure. I worked at a GE on a contract for a little while. Um, I've worked for small businesses. And then I finally landed into, um, landed a, a job at a school system in Shelton, Connecticut. And that's where I was introduced to the security side of things. Um, at first, it was more of, I guess you can call it the blue side, uh, doing more of the preventative stuff, the, you know, the incident response and, you know, mobile, you know, working with MDMs and managing devices and pushing out updates and patches and stuff like that. Um, but we kept running into these issues where we kept getting hit with ransomware. We kept getting hit with all types of different things. So it led me to start researching as to why that was happening. So I, so that's where I was introduced to vulnerability assessments. And then once I looked at vulnerability assessments, it slowly transitioned to penetration testing and just seeing everything that you could do for in a penetration test from, um, you know, the phys you know, physical pen testing, you know, actually physically trying to get into a building, social engineering, open source intelligence, and then and then the actual network or web app pen testing. It was it was like um, that little five year old kid sitting in his grandmother's <laughs> living room. It, it came back and it was just like, and he's never left. <laughs> and that's just kind of been where I'm at since it's just like um, I've just been hooked on it. Um, like I said, I wanted to continue doing it for the school system. Uh, and unfortunately there wasn't anything in the budget. And at the time, you know, um, they looked at cybersecurity as something as bigger companies should have, like, they didn't really think there were, there was anything of value in a school system that a hacker could, or, or I'm sorry, a malicious attacker could want. And I tried, you know, I explained it to them and everything. And I, and unfortunately, uh, one of the last things that happened before I left was there was a situation where they realized, oh, we should probably start taking security more serious. Um, but I was already kind of on my way. Um, you know, I had <laughs> invested my own money into taking a course. Uh, I took the CEH. Um, I read the books, but unfortunately you couldn't get the, you couldn't take the exam without having the, t without taking the course. If you didn't, if you weren't already in the field. So I actually took, a, you know, like three, four grand and paid for a, a course, drove down to Virginia for a week and um, was taught by uh, Keytron Evans on, on pen testing. And that's pretty much, like I said, that's just pretty much where I got started. And after that, it's just been, you know, job after job and, a lot of cool things and a lot of cool experiences um, from, you know, my laptop has just been awesome. That's great. And that's one, one, one of the things I love about your story is how, you know, you're working in, in, in circuit city and you wanted to be 
in the computer bench, you know, working on the computers and stuff to get experience that that's great that you pursued that. So that's yeah a big lesson for anyone listening, listening, if you want to move into somewhere, that role may not always exist. You may get to go shadow someone or help out or, you know, after your job's done. So those are really great, great avenues to, to, to look down. And, and also, you know, we, we have people from different backgrounds on the show. Some people, you know, interviewed someone from, from Europe and, you know, they believe a little more in, and, and degrees over there and their, their colleges are a little bit different. And so it's interesting to see the different, the different views and stuff. Cause that's kind of the way I got started. And when I was in it, I'd kind of took like a, a certification based class, but, you know, just to show people that there's different ways. So if college is not for you, you know, you can take an example from Davin, you can, you know, go out there and, and start doing the certification route and get your foot in the door that way, make sure and try to ask for opportunities. So that's, yeah. that's some great information there. No, absolutely. I think one of the biggest misconceptions, well, it, it definitely was for me was that um, college is only, there weren't really cybersecurity courses at the time. It was more of com- getting a computer science degree. And I don't know about a lot of people, but learning how to code just terrified me. Like I, 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 was terrified of learning how to code and do programming. So that's what kind that was one of the things that I didn't, I was like, I didn't want to go to college because I didn't want to do coding and programming and stuff like that. And then I was like, I want to just be able to focus on the specialties that I wanted to focus on. And like I said, yeah, with the certifications, I mean, there are so, there's so many out there um, that, you know, you can figure out what your career path you want whatever career path you want and figure out the certifications you should take <laughs> based on you know where you which what you want your destination to be so you know if you want to work in networking okay cool you will get your network plus you know something entry level like a foundational like a network plus and move move your way up through some of the other ones like cisco and and you know these the, you know and you can do all of that for a fraction of the cost that you would probably pay for a four-year degree. Now, if you have the opportunities and you want to go for it, I'm, you know, go for it. But this is definitely a, a, a great alternative. Yeah, definitely good for people to know that they don't have to go to college if not needed. But like you said, if they want to do it. So one, one of the things is that, yeah, just awesome that you went the certification route. And then interesting too, for, you know, for people listening, you know, Davin started out doing network and all sorts of other type of pen testing and then specialized. And that's one of the things that I share with people is once you get experience, you'll find some area that you like a little bit better. And if you really want to get good, uh, you kind of need to focus a more narrow focus. Uh, what do you think about that? What are your views? Um, yeah, I think uh, I think you're absolutely right. I think you should you should learn at least the foundations of each of them, because um, I mean, you have some shops where they have teams that are, you know, specialized in, in one uh, aspect of penetration testing. But I think you should learn all of them. I think you should work. You know, obviously, um, a lot of pen testers start out with doing the network infrastructure pen testing. So, you know, learn that and learn again. It's, it's almost like a stepping stone. Uh, learn that as your foundation for penetration testing. Then obviously look at web app pen testing. Um, look at mobile pen testing. Uh, if you want to get into bug bounties, especially web app, mobile APIs, you know, those, those are definitely some that you want to look at. Um, and then you have ones that are up and coming like cloud pen testing. Um, you know, as, as long as technology is going to come out, which the age that we live in is always going to be almost every day, there's going to be vulnerabilities that need to be tested. And um, yeah, so find your specialty or find multiple specialties. And, and, you know, not only will it make you a better pen tester, it also makes you more, more marketable and uh, more open to, uh, to other opportunities as well. Yeah, that's good advice and, and things you're interested in because you, you, you take some people's background, someone that knows mobile phones really well that they like to play around with. Maybe that's a, a way for them to get into. So what, what kind of got you into the application to specialize in your web application pen testing? Um, so like I said, I I started out doing (laughs) dual, to be honest with you, um, it was a hard lesson to learn. So, uh, I, I struck, I only did network pen, like net, uh, like network infrastructure pen testing starting out. And, um, you know, when you take a course, like, a you know, a CEH or, or a base or, or a entry level penetration testing course, you know, it's kind of simple, you know, you kind of just go through the five phases, right? You do your little recon, you do your end map, you know, you fire up Metasploit 
and whatever. And then the first time you're really on a on a job, you realize, OK, now there's a lot more to to it than just a few buttons. Um, but uh, when I first was on a, a web app pen test, um, I remember doing the assessment, but feeling like I I'm, I could have possibly missed something. And, um, and that, that just didn't sit right with me. So it was just like, okay, I need to, I need to learn more about web app pen testing. I need to become better at web app pen testing. And I also think, um, it was the learning the new tools too, you know, cause you don't, you know, you, once you start dealing with web app, it's a completely different beast than, than network pen testing to a certain, to, to a certain, um, aspect of it. Uh, like learning how to use burp suite and navigate through burp suite or zap or anything like that. Um, and, and then once you got to get used to it, it's like, Oh, okay. It, it becomes second nature. Uh, so I started doing web app pen testing and I really enjoyed it. Um, I actually kind of think I might've been enjoyed it a little bit more than I do network pen testing. And then I, about a year or two ago, about two years ago now, um, I was introduced to application pen, pen testing and I thought it was very similar to web apps and it is to a certain extent but um then i realized nope actually no there's a lot of differences and like with dealing with apis as opposed to um your traditional web applications so much so that OWASP decided to do a separate top 10 <laughs> on apis um and i think that you know just again that that little five-year-old boy <laughs> popped up again you know it's like okay so how does this work and you know it and it just it's just been you know one thing after the other and 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 i think that's also one of the great things about pen testing is that there's always a new challenge right um you can work on something today that might be harder to work on tomorrow just because of patches and and, and increased security so um yeah, like I said, that's kind of much where I've, where I've, what I've been doing. I, I focus mainly now on the application side. Um, but like I said, every once in a while, I still, you know, go back and do network and, and web app and some, and some wireless pen testing as well. That's great. So, uh, you know, now since you are where you're at and, you know, you started off here and you just kind of navigated your way, not really, you know, like a lot of us not knowing what it takes to get there and kind of figuring it out. What would you recommend to someone that's wanting to become a pen tester as far as learning how to be a pen tester? Um, first thing is um, <laughs> have patience. Um, you know, you're not going to become, you're not going to become a, a, an elite hacker overnight. Um, these things take time and it takes, you know, it takes a lot of reading and a lot of figuring things out. Um, if you're, if you're not interested in reading, then this field is, might not be for you. Um, but after that, you know, just again, having patience and just learning everything. Um, it's not enough to just know what the tool does, learn why it does it. You know, why did this exploit work or why didn't this exploit work? Um, Having a basic foundation of networking, I think, is would be very helpful. Um, you know, you don't have to get your CCNA, but if you understand how, you know, subnets and CIDR blocks and, you know, TCP IP versus UDP or, and, you know, and, 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 and how the ports work, <laughs> then, you know, that will definitely help you uh, on a pen test when needing to know, okay, port 22 is open. Okay. So I know that's SSH. So let me see if I can try, you know, whatever. So, um, yeah, I would just say, you know, reading patience, reading, and just understanding how things work. Um, you know, don't just rush and think I'm going to grab these certifications. And because I grab these certifications, I know what I'm doing, get the experience. Um, and you can actually do it don't, and, and don't feel like you have to rush or go to all of these boot camps. A lot of these skills you can learn on your own, on the side for next to nothing. Um, you know, whatever you pay for internet every month, you can, you can download and create a lab in virtual box and, and, and have at it or look at a site, like try hack me or hack the box and, and, um, you know, do a lot of their free stuff and just build up your skill set that way. 
Yeah. So what, you know, when people start out, it's kind of tough to get your foot in the door. So how would you recommend someone getting pen test experience? Um, that's where, again, probably getting that hands-on experience, doing stuff like Vone Hub, try hack me, hack the box. What I usually tell a lot of people who I mentor is, um, write them up, right? If you, if you're doing a CTF or you're doing like a, a, a hack the box machine, um, write up your process and write it out. Like it, you know, write it out. Like it's a real report. Um, that's what I did starting out. And to me, it, it shows that not only do I have, you know, this work experience or I have these certifications, now you can actually see how, how I work through a box, um, you know, they'll see, okay, yeah, you use these, you, I use these end map switches, or I use this tool and explain it in your, in your proof of concept. Um, I usually tell people whether they're, you know, when you're getting into it, learn to learn to love writing, writing your reports and proof of concepts. So you can write it in a way that is relatable, where you can hand your report to someone who's non-technical and they can follow your steps step by step and come up with the same result that you did. Um, I think that's that's important. So get that hands-on experience, but write it like keep notes of it. Take screenshots, and and you know not only will it help when you're when you bring it with you with your or attach it with your resume, um, it also helps you remember. It, it's almost like a, a resource for you. So if you ever need reference on how something worked last time or you know you see it you see something on a web application that looks familiar to like a, a vulnerability that you found in a in a previous ctf you have those notes right there that you can reference and they're your notes so um yeah just get a lot of the hands-on stuff there's a lot of free resources uh like i said you can download stuff on vone hub you can go to hack the box you can go to try hack me and just, you know, just, just hack away at stuff until you kind of, you know, you're comfortable with it. That's great advice because, you know, once you go through that and you talk to someone that's interviewing you, if you can explain the process, because a lot of times they're going to ask you, if you've got this, what would you do or how do you exploit this? So if you can describe that, there's a good chance you'll get the job. I've, you know, hit talking to more people that are entry-level pen testers that had that opportunity and knew enough to explain it. So just going out and getting the CEH, or, you know, some of the certifications is just not enough because it's not going to get you out of the technical interview. You're still going to do that. Still yeah. have to go through that. So taking notes, writing the report, I like that. So if you can understand how to write a report, I was interviewed by a company last year. I was talking to about a pen testing job. And one of their things was, is they kind of give you like some information and you write a report. And so that yeah. was just part of the, part of the, the interview process. And I spoke with someone else recently that was the way their their interview process was. They had to write a report, and the report writing is what got them the job. They yeah. still needed some help in the technical side. Yeah, but that document, yeah, that, I mean, yeah. that because those are some of the things that you can't really teach, right? Soft, like if someone has the 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 technical skills or or, or the the knowledge to 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 attain, um, obtain this information, you can pretty much teach anybody how to, how to run an Nmap scan, how to run Nessus, how, how to run Metasploit, how to look for vulnerabilities or even perform an, uh, you know, an, an OSINT um, engagement. But certain things like writing reports or um, giving presentations, because there also the, sometimes there's like the debriefing where you write the report, but you actually still have to go to the company and kind of explain the findings and writing the report. Um, I usually tell people, you know, you're writing the report. Uh, the report is either two or three parts, right? You have your executive summary area and that's for the executives. And I hate saying that, like, I don't want to knock on executives, but <laughs> they don't necessarily care what, port you found vulnerable to a specific service they want to know did we pass the assessment how how bad was it and how many of them do we need to fix so that first part of the report is you know for for the higher ups and then as you get into the report you get into the weeds report this is for more of the sys admins and the network people and the more technical folk and now you're now you're speaking to them so it's almost like you're speaking multiple languages um, to get them to come to the same conclusion. 
So if you have those soft skills, um, a lot of the times they'll they'll te- they'll bring you in and teach you and bring you in as a junior or mid level, even a mid level in some cases, because they say, OK, you have some of the skills, but you can write these reports. And like I said before, in writing the reports, especially if you're writing, if you if you've been on a team like when I was a junior pen tester, I didn't obviously know everything. But in writing some of the reports of some of the senior guys, I got to see what they did. And and then because I had that foundational knowledge, it was, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, so that's what this end map script does. Or, oh, 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 so they did this or they did this manually without having to look up a tool from Metasploit. And now you're 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 picking as you're writing it out, you're picking up more information that will make you better also. So yeah, I would definitely say learn the documentation. And if not, guess what? There's still other jobs out there like technical writing that people will pay you <laughs> really decent pay um, to just to just write write up the stuff. So definitely, definitely, definitely learn those, those that writing and communication skills. Great advice. And as far as you, I know you do a lot of streaming and stuff. Do you do you, uh, streaming and content creation, do you think that helps people's careers very much? Would you recommend that or, and, and how has it helped you? Um, I think it has, I think I'm, for one, it's, it's introduced me to a lot of people, including you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the right, uh, especially with the writing, like with the blog posts that definitely help is helpful. Um, and then, yeah, even with the content creation, if you're doing, if you're doing a pen test, um, live, it's nerve wracking, right? Uh, you know, it's like, it's like having someone over your shoulder. So while you're doing it, but, but that's one way to look at it. The other way you could look at it is while you're doing it, you can have someone again, kind of give you tips. So it's almost like a, it's almost like a live study group where you have a group of like-minded people telling you certain things that you may not have known, or you might tell to show them something that they didn't necessarily know. Um, but it, yeah, definitely. I think it definitely makes it, um, it makes it easier and it makes it, yeah, it makes, it makes that whole process of doing a penetration test and, and working in the field a lot better. Um, because if you, if you know it well enough to teach it, then you know what you're talking about. Right. So, and no, and, and, and one thing about this field is if you don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> you know, you'll, you'll get called out for it. So it's kind of like, yeah, it's almost like I need to make sure I'm doing it right. And I need to make sure that, um, you know, I'm saying and doing the right things and I'm not doing anything that's wrong. I'm following the rules and having, and and doing that while doing that live or doing that with other people on the, um, on the stream, you know, like I said, it's very beneficial where they can, they can assist you. So, yes, I think, content creation definitely will help, especially again, um, not necessarily even the videos, but if you do the blog stuff, like to me, the blog stuff, if you, if you write up, if you write up CTFs for a blog, it's almost like doing it. Like I said, with writing up the report in your resume is another reference that you can say, Hey, check out all these blogs I've written, um, on different, uh, CTFs that I've done. Yeah, that's great. So that way you're, you know, it's really easy to give that to an employer. They see that, they get an idea of your writing style, how you think, do those yeah. write-ups and stuff. That's really great information there. Great, great advice. So I know you you do a lot of mentoring and stuff. Did you have any mentoring along the way or any it may, I know some people might be not officially mentor, but there's people that they look to for advice periodically. Was there anything anyone like that in your career? Um so when I first started, like I said, um Keytron Evans was my first instructor, and I guess you could say he was my mentor starting out. Um, but uh, I actually didn't have any mentors um, coming up in the field. Um, I remembered reaching out to a lot of different people and either just kind of, you know, not getting a response or I, I don't know, or, or they were too busy. Um, and I remember that for a while there, I kind of took it. I kind of took it personal. And then it was like, you know, me and my stubborn ways. Finally, a few years later, I started to think, I said, well, you know, what makes them 
what makes them so popular that, that you wanted them to mentor you is the, they're probably really good at what they do. And if they're probably really good at what they do, then they're probably really busy. So I kind of got over, <laughs> you know, <laughs> my, my, my bitterness. Um, but that's what led, that's actually what led to this content creation because um, I remember thinking, okay, well, I remember being that person, that guy or that girl, you know, who wanted to learn about it. And that person may, the person that they reached out to may have been too busy. So how could I help people, even if I'm not there physically or present at the moment? And that's where the blog started, because now I could say, okay, I can help you maybe on this day, but to answer your question, check out this article I wrote or watch this video that I did or watch this talk that I gave. Um, and then, you know, if you have any questions from there, then maybe we can, you know, we, we can, we can exchange messages back and forth until we have that time where we could actually meet. Um, so that's, that's actually how that started. So, um, you know, you, you take, I took my experiences and just kind of flipped it and said, okay, well, I remember how, how I felt at that time. And I do want to help people. So let me just spend, you know, a few more minutes to create this content and that'll help. And then, you know, the plan was to do that and then do other things like, you know, whether it was online courses or doing like meetup groups and then 2020 happened. (laughs) (laughs) um, But it just led to more, it just led to more content creation. So, you know, it's still getting the word out. That's a great way to help people because I mean, you know, you're busy, you don't have time to to message back and forth with someone. That's great that you have that content that people could go out and look at. I've I've done that similar thing before when someone wanted to be a pen tester, I would point them in the direction of of my of some videos of my talk before the book came out. And just as a quick way, you know, watch this first and then we'll talk. You'll get kind of an idea, come back with a question. So that's re- that's that's really good. I like that. Yeah. So as far as any advice, you know, we're getting down close to the end of the show. Uh, Is there anything we didn't discuss or, you know, during our conversation that you would like to share or any shout outs you'd like to give? Um, So three things. One is um, to always bet on yourself, right? Um, Yeah, this field is great. The people in this field are great, but there are times where things get rough and things get frustrating and you'll contemplate, you know, (laughs) looking at other things or stepping away or whatever. Um, But, you know, you bet on yourself. Always, always do that. You know, if you bet on yourself, you do the work and always do your best. You know, you'll you'll be fine. And also, you know, learn when to step back and take breaks. Um, This field moves really quick and it can get overwhelming. So it doesn't hurt to take a step back and just say, okay, I need to take a breather for a minute. Um, And like I said, finally, just kind of, you know, just understand, understand what you're doing and why things are the way they are, why they work, why they don't work, what the different tools are. Um, That's my those are those are the three things I would say um, as far as any shout outs. Like I said, I want to thank you for inviting me on. Um, and I just want to thank everybody um, in the cybersecurity community. Um, like I said, the last year and a half to two years is, has been extremely challenging. Um, but I think one of the things that I've seen um, is the community coming together whether it's on Twitter or Zoom calls or little Zoom meetings and stuff, and just trying to help each other and uplift one another, um, you know, because there's a lot of stuff that's going on that's a lot that, that's really challenging in these times, personally and professionally. So um, just shout out to everybody in the community and those who want to get into the community and just those who are just doing the right thing. Well, thanks for, for taking the time to share your story and, and your advice. It's really great stuff. I'm sure there's a lot of people are going to get a lot of good out of it. So thanks for joining us. And thanks everyone for joining us on this episode. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Hacker Factory Podcast with Philip Wiley. 
If you learned something new and this podcast made you think, then share ITSBmagazine.com with your friends, family, and colleagues. If you represent a company and wish to associate your brand with our conversations, sponsor one or more of our podcast channels. We hope you will come back for more stories and follow us on our journey. You can always find us at the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society.